Hello everyone, welcome back to X-Plane 11. Once again, you're looking at the Carinado Turbo Commander 690B. It's finally here in X-Plane, and I have been having a blast with this airplane. It's in my wheelhouse. It's a GA airplane, and it has the uh, turbo props, so you have the speed. I absolutely uh, favor airplanes like that. With that said, it's a bear of an airplane. It really is. You have to stay ahead of it at all times, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about as we fly it. So. Anywho, we're sitting here on the ramp in Miami, and we're going to go down to Key West today. Uh, we're using the Nimbus Simulations Miami Scenery. A link for everything I'm using will be in the description below. You can check it out there. Um, and we're going to go down to Key West, and I'm using the Icarus X Aviation Scenery Package down there, which is fantastic. And we're using some Ortho XP along the way. However, when you start seeing the coral reef in the actual island of Key West, I'm using the um, Icarus Scenery Packages for that. With it said... I've been trying to get Drzvecki designs to work with the Nimbus, but they just don't want to play together. Uh, if you guys have any tips for that, please leave them below in the comments. I would love to get both of those working together seamlessly, but uh, I have not been able to do that. With that said, check out the Turbo Commander. Let's move this uh, pan it around a little bit here so you can see the model of this airplane. Carinado always makes a fantastic model. And I've really got to say, this is the first time I've enjoyed a Carinado airplane in a very long time. Um, I usually, uh, you know, always fall in love with the look of them, but they don't seem to fly too good. And uh, this one flies pretty darn decently. It really does. Um, with that said, we have a basic autopilot system. If we go over here on the left-hand side, our Carinado little panels, we have a basic autopilot with a heading, a nav. We have approach mode, altitude hold, uh, indicated airspeed mode. And you can use that to, uh, we're going to use it for your climb out or your descent. I won't be using that today. I'm not afraid to hand fly the airplane. Um, it's kind of an unnecessary thing unless you just want that, uh, that workload off you. Uh, back course hold, and then this is how you engage it. So when we have IES mode, you can go down and up on the pitch here um, to uh, get your, your speed higher or lower. Uh, altitude today is going to be 8,000 feet. I had that already set in there. Keep in mind the altitude alerter when we get to 7,000 feet and it starts going, beep, it's going to be loud, just so you know. All the little nuances of the airplane is pretty loud. Um, you have the basic cameras here. We have the field of view you can change. You have all your different uh, camera views. Now, those are all on the numpad, so I don't have to worry about that. And then here we have our options. We have window reflections, instrument reflections, static elements. That's the cones and all the remove before flight, which we need to go ahead and remove those because we're going to be flying. Pilot door and baggage door. Close the baggage door. And we can close the pilot door. There we go. You can change the livery right here, but I'm pretty happy with the 410 Victor Bravo, so I'm not really worried about that. All right, let's get uh, in the cockpit. You see my guy is in there and his co-pilot. They're ready to get down to Key West. Let's check out the Turbo Commander inside the cockpit. All right, welcome aboard the Commander 690B. I'm going to turn on some track IR here so you can get a look around. We've got the weird kind of M-style yoke. As you can see, very interesting. Uh, the detail and the modeling in here is absolutely superb, as you would expect from a Carinado model. Look at that. There's our overhead panel. And you might hear my voice going in and out of the microphone. That's because I'm using track hour and looking around with my head. Uh, and down here, let's check the throttle panel. We are out of beta range. Yep, we want to be on ground idle. Uh, condition levers, we want to make sure they're not all the way down in the emergency stop feather mode. We'll be right here. It's going to be fine. Prop sync is off. Taxi lights off. We have our parking brake set. And uh, all we need to do now is make sure that uh, we get some ground power. So we're going to do a ground power start. Uh, there's not one modeled, sadly, which there was, but there just isn't. Uh, external power on. I'm gonna click that guy. And you can hear it there. External power is right there. Sounds good. Turn the battery on. And we'll do control and tie for those guys. And we'll do position anti-collision. How about that? That sounds good to me. Uh, horsepower limiters. We want those set to the on position, which they are on right now. And what those do is those are going to make sure we don't go over the 700 and I believe it's 40 horsepower range of the engine. And uh, to start the engine's pretty simple stuff. We just click this left side here. We're going to start the engine one first and then engine number two. So we're going to go to fuel pump on. You can hear that little whine of the fuel pump. Now, on the real airplane, you'll have a yellow light come on, and then it'll extinguish, and then you can start it. Uh, it's not modeled here, obviously. You don't see a yellow light. And we go to the ground position. 
There it goes. All right, we got visual confirmation that's coming online. We've got our RPM horizon. Watching ETT or ITT. And we want to make sure we don't get a hot start. That looked pretty good right there. There's our horsepower. And we're going to wait for that guy to settle, which it just did. And we're going to go left generator on. And let's go ahead and start the right engine next. Fuel pump on. Give it a few seconds here. And let's go ahead and fire it up. this thing come online making sure we don't have a heart a hot start there we go although the battery hot symbol will come on I have not figured out how uh, oh no it went away but I've had it in some flights where that comes on and uh, you can't operate the uh, the strobes or only the strobe lights it seems without the battery turned on so I don't know if that's a uh, a thing of the actual airplane or if it's a glitch I really don't know right gen on there we go and we have generators on we can disconnect the external power go these guys can come on lock the door belts there they go and then we have ice protections off don't need it avionics we're gonna turn those guys on we don't we need all but the last one the last one's an in-op switch and you can see there's the Garmin GNS 530, the classic X plane one we're going to be using today. And then it comes with an Avidyne system that is pretty much useless in this airplane. Uh, the traffic display, you click on it, you get these yellow dots, but I have no world traffic running right now, so I don't know why um, it would display those yellow dots. Uh, you don't have a working weather radar, sadly, and you don't have any terrain data. So I, it's kind of a useless thing. And when you click this guy, Look, you have nothing for the most part. And that's not because our nav data is out of date or anything like that. It's just not modeled, which is kind of sad. I wish we had at least some uh, weather data. So the, the fix for that, I can get the Reality XP license uh, for the, uh, the 750. And I could put that in here and then I would have a lot more options than what we're given right here. So keep that in mind. All right, airplanes sound pretty good here. And let's double check everything up here. That's all good. Wipers off. Do, 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 do. Sorry, the icing boots. You would uh, you would check those if you wanted to there. Uh, ignition override is like, why is that light on? There we go. Don't want a light on. Okay, those are all looking good. So let's go ahead and get our... Uh, our props where we need them and everything here. Bring this back a little bit. There we go. Let's do our flight plan. So, flight plan today. Uh, I'm actually going to turn off track IR. It drives you nuts when you're trying to operate the, uh, the GPS with that. Trust me. We'll go to flight plan mode here. And we're Miami. And we're going to go over here to this guy. Uh, push the cursor in. There we go. And then go to this one and small we're going to go to manatee intersection so manatee there we go and then t e there it is right there hit enter and then we're going to go from manatee to marathon so that's going to be mike tango hotel so let's do that one next mike oop tango then hotel go marathon like that and then we'll do key west is our final destination k e y w pretty much how it sounds out there we go and then w there it is right there key west international accept that so now we have it now when we get to uh before we get to manatee we're probably going to turn early that's how it's usually done in the real world. They turn a little bit earlier and go direct to mar marathon from there. So you don't go way out of your way. So flight plan looks good. Uh, what we can actually do is go up here to Manatee and we're going to 
hit the direct button and we're gonna hit activate so we'll go direct to manatee out of the gate no need for miami and all that uh hit flight plan there and we're pretty much good to go let's get our weather so let's go ahead and select that that's going to be miami 119.15 so let's bring this down to 15 right there miami intl information delta there we go 1700 zulu weather okay wind 140 at 10 visibility more than 10 4010 sky conditions 3700 few temperature 31 2.22 Altimeter 3010. 3010. Arriving runways 08 right, 26 left, 08 left, 26 right, 09, 27, 12, 30. One, two, Departing runways 08 right, 26 left, yeah. 08 left. We got, we, got we got the gist. We have our information we need for that. 3010. Winds are right out of the south there at 120. So that's good to go. So all we got to do now is go into beta range on both engines. So left one first. There it is. Bring it back up. Do the right engine. And back up. So what we just did was we released those pins and uh, the airplane will actually taxi. Okay. So you have to be ready for it on the brakes before you do that let's get our um panel lights set up here let's go panel lights on and your panel lighting's actually up here this guy we bring it all the way up you see right there we've got panel lights there and on the right hand side bring those guys up as well there they are right there it's just dim enough in here to have those on at least but the the cockpit night lighting is fantastic and i'll show you that at the end of the flight all right ready to get on out of here believe it or not i know it takes a it takes a while to get things going but we've got to make sure that uh, we're on it. So I'm on the brakes right now and I release the parking brake and notice that the airplane's not lunging forward yet. We're going to bring this thing down into uh, just almost beta, but not quite. It's basically above. There we go right there. That's kind of where I want to be for, t for uh, taxiing purposes. I'm going to turn on my track IR. There we go. And uh, we're ready to get on out here. So release the brakes and you can notice how it just wants to go, man. And it does. We're gonna go straight out here to the left and we'll taxi down that way over to the runway one two and we'll check our flight controls those are free and correct love it and you can use beta as you're taxiing here you'll hear the prop watch when you do it sounds awesome there we go so this airplane is very unique um what I mean by that is that you have to uh, taxi the airplane on the brakes. So the way that the uh, the nose wheel steering works in this airplane, it goes off of how you're, uh, how much tow brake you're using. So you're actually using the tow brakes to turn it. Uh, you're still using the rudder pedal a little bit, but you're using a lot of braking. Otherwise, the airplane's just going to brake free from you and start getting away from you. You don't want that. You do not want that at all. So let's taxi down to runway one two turn our taxi light on probably need that there we go all right we're gonna make a left here on kilo two take this over to runway one two kind of confusing i have uh, multiple lines down like i said i'm trying to get the two airports to work together and uh, it's been a nightmare <laughs> it really has uh so that's the reason why we have a bunch of taxi lines here i'm gonna take the the middle of the two how about that it seems to be the best way around here actually that kind of looks right all right nobody's coming on that runway so we're gonna go ahead and cross here let's do that Head over to runway one two. We'll do an intersection departure. Since it doesn't take much to get this thing going. All right, almost ready to go here. Trim, um, as far as trim goes, you want to be just barely above the zero right over there. And we are set there already. Um, the airplane's trim doesn't have a lot of negative trim to it. It's got a lot of positive, but it uh, doesn't seem to have a whole lot of negative. So you got to be ready for that. No flaps on takeoff. No need for it. Um, and uh, the flap 
handle on it, it's kind of interesting. You have to hold it down for that uh, actual flap to travel to its position there. Let's go ahead and make our way on to runway 12 here. And what we'll do is we'll turn on our landing lights, extend those landing lights, turn on a strobe as well. And looking good so far. Let's go ahead and uh, line up on runway 12. What we'll do is we'll uh, hold the brakes down. We're going to advance uh, our condition levers forward. And then we're going to hold the brakes and we're going to ride the brakes to 40 knots before we um, release them and go over to the rudder pedal. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. So we're going to go up on our condition levers full forward for RPM to go into flight mode. And there it is right there. Make sure we're not in beta. Okay, and we aren't. All right, so that's good. We're gonna bring up our power here ever so slightly. And we're gonna really let the airplane start to roll. And we're riding the brakes, still riding the brakes. And we're gonna go to take off power here. There's right there, we're past 40. So we're gonna release those. And 100 knots comes up pretty quick. That's our speed right there. And on up in the air we go. How about it? All right, positive rate gear up. The gear is on its way up now. We can go over to GPS mode here. So let's do it. click that guy and we're gonna distance the track 201. Look at our climb rate here. You can get up to almost 4,000 feet per minute. It's insane. So let's go ahead and uh, grab this guy. We're gonna go over to heading of 201. So, oh, no, not you. Why would you ever do that? 201. All right, there is good. And uh, we're looking good here. Yeah, see, there's about 4,000 feet per minute. Look at this thing. Climbs like a rocket. Start our turn out here. Hand flying it. Getting a feel for it. Don't have to bring any uh, flaps in or anything like that. So that's good. And we're going to turn on course to Manatee. But it's a whole lot of airplane to uh, to stay ahead of. Like it just wants to go constantly, and you've you've got to be the one that says no, not yet. Whoa, Nelly, not yet. Okay, rolling off here. This is a good intercept heading right here. Getting closer to Manatee. We climb up to 8,000 feet. About to go into the clouds here shortly. And the needle is slowly moving this way. I'm going to maintain this about right here. About 2,000 feet per minute. Maybe about 1,800 or so. Into the clouds. And it's pretty bright up here, actually. We don't need our, uh, our panel lights after all. Same thing on the other side. We'll get in a second here. We're going to be turning on the Manatee intersection now. Let's turn left. Look at that. Skimming the clouds here. Looks amazing. All right. We'll proceed on course here. I love cloud surfing in this thing. Pretty good right there. We're going to hand fly it all the way to 8,000 feet before we use the autopilot. Go ahead and get those right side lights out. There we go. Ever so slightly. We're going to be over uh, Miami Homestead here shortly. That's where we're located right now. Yeah, 2,000 feet per minute. Works out pretty well because you're, you're, and there's the sound I was telling you about. One to go. Uh, we're at 210 knots or so here on climb. Like it, it boogies, man. It, it gets up and goes, and that's what I like about the airplane. We'll bring our power back here. We don't need to be running those things so high. We don't need to set it for cruise yet, but don't need it to be so high right now on our climb out. As long as we're not exceeding any of the red lines, we're fine. But you want to take care of the airplane. 
turn to the right here, get back on course. And we're coming up on 8,000 feet. Now I'll open this up. It's easier to do it this way. I'm going to on 8,000 here. And we just go engage you. There's the altitude hold and navigation mode right there to the GPS. And the airplane has it. That is all there is to that. We are about nine minutes out to Manatee. Like I said, we're going to start our turn before we get to Manatee intersection. And now we can just enjoy the view there for a little while. And uh, we're at cruise. So let's go ahead and uh, get the airplane set up for cruise. We want to have our RPM around 94. So let's bring those suckers back here. Same thing with this guy. Got to play with it here. Uh, 95-ish is going to be just fine. We don't need to go crazy. As long as the airplane's happy, we will be happy. We're going to try to get these things to sink a little bit up, too. With the prop sink. So I'm going to add that right. There we go. Those look pretty close there on visual. So let's turn on prop sync. There we go. We're 8,000 feet, so we can bring our uh, retracts in, actually. We're just going to leave the uh, regular lane lights on because we're below 10,000 feet. And uh, all should be well. Um, I'm sure you don't have to, but we're going to do it that way. Hitting a little bit of turbulence here in the clouds. No big deal. I love it. getting rocked by some uh, good amount of turbulence here but uh, we're gonna start our turn here shortly let's watch there's manatee intersection right there we're 25 miles out to that so we're probably gonna turn towards direct to marathon around 10 nautical miles to manatee is where we're gonna go for there but yeah this uh the plane's getting bounced around pretty good here but it should smooth out along the way i think there's some building storms in the area it's about that time of day in florida where the uh, storms and the updrafts and everything are starting to uh, really, really start, uh, are really starting to uh, come together. smoother air up here we're just cruising on top of some clouds we're going to be making our right turn to go direct to marathon now so let's go ahead and go to our flight plan page and we'll go to marathon right there and we're going to hit the direct to button and we're going to hit activate to that guy bam and the airplane will start its turn and we go direct to marathon now 10 minutes out to marathon 44 nautical miles and uh, we'll start our descent a little bit after marathon We'll probably go direct to Key West from there. Uh, we'll probably be able to pick up the ATIS for Key West by then, too. That'll be nice. And then after that, we can uh, start planning our arrival, which is probably probably going to be on Runway Niner, I would imagine. Look at the cloud hole down there. That looks so cool. I love skimming the clouds. We had the altitude hold set to 8,000, but it's just creeped up to 700 afterwards. I don't know why the autopilot did that. Very strange, but nonetheless, we'll just live with it. Almost to Marathon. We're going to probably cross right over Marathon, actually, if you look here. You see the airstrip? Right off our nose, and after we cross over Marathon, we'll proceed our uh, turn to the right and head direct to Key West from there. And we'll expect a left downwind, probably for runway 9 or I would imagine. It's usually what's in use down here. 
but we will see if we can pick up the ATIS. Let's actually see if we can do that now. Turn off track IR. And uh, ATIS for the airport in Key West is going to be 119.675. So let's do 675 on this one. And that looks good. Key West International. Yes, yeah, so we are picking it up. Delta. Delta. Zulu weather. Wind 150 at 7. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 31. 2.23. Altimeter 3007. 3007. Arriving runway 09. Yep. Departing runway, runway 09. Advise on initial contact. You have Delta. We have Delta. Fantastic. We don't need to mess with that anymore. Uh, winds are 150, so we're going to be landing on runway 9. -er. We're going to have a crosswind to the right, but it seems like it's pretty, pretty straightforward from there. All right. Let's see if the airplane. Oh, there's the marathon right up there. And that's the airport down there below us on the left. It's the island. Marathon Island. Pretty cool. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn our track hour back on. Just a beautiful day down here in the Keys. And we're getting ready to turn to the right. And you'll know Key West because you'll see all the coral reefs, which is really neat. We're going to go to about heading 240 for a little while, and we're going to fly to the left of the island. 240 looks pretty good right there. So we're not going to worry about the needle. The needle's going to be moving all around on us. Not a big deal at all. Yeah, we just hit those bumps on the way out of uh, Key West, or out of Miami, and it's, it's smooth as glass out here, and this is nice. Alright, we're getting closer to the airport. Let's go ahead and turn our extended landing lights on there. Taxi lights, oh, we forgot to turn those off, but that's alright. It's such a strange spot for the taxi lights to be right there. You're so used to having all your lights right there. But that's alright. Alright, we're coming down to 3,000 feet here. Got the island in sight. We'll be there shortly. This flight today, the uh, route and everything that uh, we're doing is pretty much what Martin Air, I believe is the name of them, that operate the caravan out of Miami down here. We're pretty much mimicking that. So that's the reason why we went, only went to 8,000 feet. And that's why we're just kind of using the same route and the same method. But yeah, look at those coral reefs. Isn't that beautiful? Now you don't get that if you just have Ortho for XP, you won't actually get that with a tile. That, uh, the coral reefs, those actually come with the Icarus scenery, which is fantastic. All right, another thousand feet to go down. Probably get some stutters and whatnot on the way in. It's loading in scenery. Yeah, I'll let it do its thing. See some boats out there off our nose. Let's start slowing this puppy down. Pull our power back here. We're getting closer to that 1,000 foot mark. And uh, we got the airport right there on our right. We're just going to keep on coming down here in this. And we're going to bring our power back. Now, I'm going to try to make it to where it doesn't have a horrible horn because we don't have the gear down yet. We just want to be just above 1,000 here. There we go. We shouldn't have the horn right there. That's looking pretty good. And we're going to start bleeding off all the speed. And we're actually going to be dropping the gear down for drag before anything else. There we go. That's pretty good right there. I can live with 1,200 feet, no problem. Pitching the nose back. So we don't have to fight it so much. And we're good there. 
can actually bring the gear down wherever we want. I'm actually going to do it now. There goes the gear. Taxi lights are on. The lane lights are on. We'll add some flap here shortly, too. We have to get to the uh, arc first. Bring that nose up. Kill off some speed. We'll start our turn to the base. We are on our right base for runway niner. And we're coming up on the arc here. And remember, you have to add those in manually. So push it down and go half on flap there. That'll work. Prop sinks on, so we want to turn that guy off. And we go fully forward on the prop or the condition levers. Slowing the airplane down even more. And we can turn final now. Beautiful shot there of the coral reef. Looks amazing. There's the runway. Line up here just like this. And we'll probably go full flap as we get over the uh, beach there. A little bit of time until that happens. Hold about 900 feet here. And then what we want to do is we're going to start getting the airplane down to about, uh, about 100 knots on short final here. Bring that nose up. a lot of back pressure so I'm using a lot of trim here to try to alleviate that there we go there's about 100 knots right there that's what you want Have a little bit more power here not much there's 800 that's our pattern altitude and we see the runway right there right on the glide slope right over white there's the cruise ship right there on the left oh it just popped okay so it it's popping in and out that's why I haven't seen it here sometimes <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, does it? Remember, that wind's going to be off our right-hand side here. Let's go ahead and go full flap. That's going to really help with the, uh, the feeling of the nose wanting to fall forward there. There we are. That's about what we want to be at right here. 100 knots coming over the beach. Yeah, it's like just a, it's like ortho scenery. Some, something is happening here with the two sceneries. It might be my ortho tile overlay messing with the uh, scenery. It's a little bit of stuttering. No bother. We just got to fly the airplane. Uh, that's what we're doing here. So we're at about 100 knots. Looking good. That's where we want to be. Still red over white, right on the glide slope. One of my biggest pet peeves with this airplane is um, when you touch down, you'll see when we touch down and we go into beta reverse, uh, it doesn't click in until you're down to a certain speed, sadly. On the real airplane, when you touch down and you're at, you're at idle, when you bring them those into reverse, they immediately come on and help you slow down. But in this plane, it doesn't seem to happen too much. About 100 knots there, looking good. He's both to about 100. And this kind of airplane, you want to maintain uh, power all the way down to the runway just until you touch down. Here we go. Oh, nice. You see the old airplane sitting over there in that little field right there on the left. That looks awesome. Right on the glide slope, looking okay here. Slow down a little bit more. A lot of not a lot of runway to mess around with don't want to float it too much all right start flaring it throw it into beta takes a minute for it to happen you see the left one came on before the right one it's got to be like a certain airspeed before it really kicks in there it goes Beautiful. There's past 40 knots. We don't need to be on that. We just go back to our uh, tow brakes here, and now we can bring the condition levers down to low idle.
Welcome to Key West, everybody. We're gonna go in here to the ramp. Signature's down on the left, but I think we'll just park right here by where all these guys are. It's King Air. I'll go in on Alpha 6. That'll work. All right, so let's clean up the airplane. Those can come off. Uh, strobes can come off. Air, that guy go to the normal. Doesn't matter. I just do that out of habit. The reason why is because we don't have to worry about the uh, the cabin pressure because we were under 10,000 feet today for our flight. Bring it in here. first and then the left and they shut down and by us having it in beta right there they're actually going to uh, engage the start locks and that's what you want Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Key West. We made it in one piece. How about it? Go ahead and turn our anti-collision off. All that guy. These guys can come off now. And same thing with all this. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and open our pilot door, baggage door, all that stuff. Static elements can come on. And, uh... We are on the ramp. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I will see you next time. Take care.